Sitka, Alaska is home to the only public boarding school in the United States, Mount Edgecombe High. <laughs> Students there study Pacific Rim cultures. In translation, that means essentially, how do you do business in Japan? Not geographically, but in the global market, Sitka is a good deal closer to Tokyo than to New York. With the development of advanced communication and transportation facilities, economic interests have replaced geographic ones. Schoolroom practice now could become economic advantage in the future. I am from Tatitlik, Alaska, and I am here today to sell you a product called Bridal Falls Sparkling Water. Can children drink this drink? Yes, it's just carbonated water with flavoring. Aurora was very effective, I thought, in emphasizing the health aspect of the drink. I mean, by the time she was finished, I was ready to buy it. Japanese customers are buying this Alaska salmon from the high school's entrepreneur class. It is prepared, preserved, and packed to meet their requirements. Just in case the students forget, there's a prominent sign to remind them. This is obviously unusual for a high school, but what is most unusual is that Mount Edgecombe, all of it, is following Dr. Deming's continual improvement quality system. Uh, I was, after seven years, I was burnt out in this profession, and that's right on the average. I knew that there were specific things that needed to be done within the system to change it to improve quality, but I couldn't make it happen. What we've done in the past is throw money at problems rather than look at the management system of education. Our whole system is preventing quality from happening. The way we evaluate students, the way teachers and administrators work together, the whole thing is set up to prevent top quality from happening. Everybody wants to do a good job. Students want to do a good job. Teachers want to do a good job. Nobody comes into the system wanting to do poor work or poor quality. Mount Edgecombe High School is not a special school. It serves students from all over Alaska. Ordinary students are taught by ordinary teachers. No one here was hand-picked. They are from small towns, and they have all the promises and problems of every other group of American teenagers. Right, I think that's the best one we ever had. <laughs> the difference is Langford. At an industrial meeting in Arizona, he heard about quality programs and knew that was the way to go. He studied everything he could find, contacted the quality experts he could, and was enthusiastic to make continuous improvement happen at Mount Edgecombe. He was the only one. I came back and explained it to a lot of people, and they said, that's, that's very interesting, now let's go back to work. And nobody really wanted to get involved, so what I did is started on the root level, and I started with a group of students, and I trained students. And within a year, um, everybody, including management in the organization, suddenly saw a drastic change in those students in the way they talked and worked and their abilities and their ability to want to learn and that's what made the change. Uh, my whole role as a teacher has changed. Um, I used to before do the research and then I'd present the material to the kids. That was no good. They didn't learn anything. I learned all kinds of, <laughs> I learned all kinds of good information. When they hand in their work, I don't serve as the judge and jury anymore. What I'm looking for is quality. And my job is to come back to them and point out where there is poor quality or where changes need to be made and where they can make improvement. Yeah, continuous improvement's given me a way to surpass my goals by measuring my chart, you know, measuring what I've done in the past and now what I need to do to improve myself to make myself go further in the future. I got it done. Last in Kathleen McCrossin's English class, students are studying Homer's Odyssey. Rather than read the epic poem, then take a true-false test, they meet in groups to raise and discuss questions, and they compare modern issues in America to the ones in ancient Greece. And they have a lot of energy and enthusiasm for what they're doing, and that's what makes learning work. If it's somebody else forcing it down your throat, it's never going to work. New students that come into this system kind of go through a shock for a while because they can't quite believe that we could trust people that much. They can't quite believe that we would want them to take that much responsibility for their own ed education. When I first started into this process, I thought statistical analysis was 99% of the process and the human relations was 1%. Since we've been in it for two years, I'm now realizing it's just the opposite. 
we can teach anybody in a half an hour session how to do simple statistical analysis proce processing, such as Pareto charts and, and control charts and, and those types of things. We can't in a half an hour persuade people to use them. So it takes a long time for people to begin to absorb why they need to begin doing those types of things. Also in human relations involves a whole new focus about working together in teams. It must move into a different position this time. A team of science students built this robot in the hope of making science as interesting as sports. And they did. I think all the schools in the nation should implement this because if not, we're going to be in serious trouble because we're just 160 students up here. There's millions of people down there that are all going to have to get in gear if we're going to make it. It is a good analysis. People everywhere are going to have to get in gear, and the gear is quality. Quality is a new way to think about, organize, and improve what you do. We have shown you successful programs in manufacturing, service, government, hospitals, and even schools. So while we are the first to admit that a quality program is difficult, clearly it is not impossible. Students from Mount Edgecombe High School are often invited to explain the rather difficult concept of quality to other students and to adult industrialists. We were curious how they did it. Do you remember Snow White? Snow White and the New Management System. Once upon a time, there was a family in a faraway kingdom. The king, Dr. Deming, was a very business-oriented man. He managed his whole kingdom with Dr. Deming was then called upon by the United States to implement his new management system in Japan. Snow White was then left with her wicked stepmother, Waste. Waste knew that if Snow White implemented quality, she would take over and Waste would be eliminated. The Wicked Witch of Waste sent Snow White into the Forest of Opportunity, where she met four woodland animals named Will, Belief, Wherewithal, and Doing. In order to cause a change in any organization, the animal will explain that people must first want to change. Then Belief chimed in explaining that just wanting to change was not enough. People have to believe that changes can be made. Wherewithal explained that once Will and Belief have worked their magic, it takes statistical analysis and human relations to make the change stick. Then doing said, once the first three have been completed, things just simply need to be done. Snow White, of course, finds the seven dwarfs at the Seven Dwarfs Mining Company and begins to improve their lives with a quality program. Meanwhile, in the ugly castle of waste, the magic mirror said, Snow White is alive and living in a cottage near a clearing. She is teaching seven dwarfs how to implement quality in their lives. The angry witch grabbed her magic book. She then turned herself into an old lady and contemplated her revenge. The old woman offered Snow White a shiny red apple. As soon as Snow White took a bite of the apple, she fell into a deep sleep of status quo, where things can never improve, they can only stay the same. If you do remember Snow White, you know that she was awakened by a kiss from Prince Charming. The kiss this time comes from the Prince of Commitment. And because of the prince's commitment and Snow White's quality, together they produced a beautiful daughter and named her Productivity. And the kingdom continually improved forever. However, the moral of the story is, as soon as you reach the point of success, don't get caught biting the apple of status quo. Thank you. There are any number of keys to a quality program and which one is on whom you ask. Senior management must be involved. That's a key. Training and education are key. Statistical analysis is a key. There is another key that seems difficult for people to accept, even though those who know American film classics should accept it easily. It's called cooperation across the board. Then I'm sure to get a brain, a heart, a home, the name. Without their close cooperation, no one of them could have reached the Emerald City and the Wizard of Oz alone. Eventually, each got what he or she wanted, because each helped the others, and that concern for each other was the Wonderful Wizard. There is no exact recipe for a quality program. It would be easier if there were. 
What you can do depends on where you are. If you own a company, you can do quite a bit. If you work in one, you can do less, but you can do something. If you're a parent, you can help with public education. Of course, if you're the school superintendent, you can help even more. The only mistake is in believing that it is out of your hands, that you can do nothing, that one person will not make a difference. David Langford, a public school teacher, is one person. He made a difference. I'm Lloyd Dobbins. For all the individuals who worked on these programs and made a difference, good night. <laughs> Thank you.